Okay, welcome to part one of this series. Um, like I said in the previous part, in this video we're going to actually go over pretty much everything. Um, as you can see, um, I've removed all of the code from this file, and hopefully, as you guessed, there's no HTML to this. It's literally just like 10 lines of PHP code, so not too much. There's a little bit of sort of explanation that I need to do, so we'll just go through that. So again, I'll just very briefly go over the file structure. Um, what we have is this zip.php file here, and that's the file that we're going to be working with and looking at with our browser. And then we have this uploads folder, which obviously could be any folder. I just use this because it's sort of it's linked to the previous video, and this contains all the files that we're going to be um, working with. Well, I'm working with compressing. Okay, so that's that brief explanation done. Um, let's get on with the code, I guess. So inside of our zip.php, the first thing we need to do is create a new instance of the zip archive object. So the way we do that is by creating a new variable which I want to call zip. I'm going to set this equal to a new zip archive, like so. Except that needs to be capitalized. Okay. And what this will do is, well, it will create the object that we can then use to work with our zip file. So once we've created the sort of Effectively, this is sort of similar to including a library file, if you like, sort of. Anyway, once we've done that, we can use the methods that this provides to do things. So the first thing we're going to do is open the zip file that we're going to be writing to. So from the zip object, oops, from the zip object, what we're going to do is open the file, and the file name that we're going to be opening is just for the sake of this is going to be explain, no, <laughs> example dot zip. Okay. And because this file doesn't exist, we need to tell this uh, zip archive to actually create the file. The way we do that is by passing in a constant as the second parameter, and the constant is zip archive, and then this funny double colon thingy, and then the name of the constant, which in this case is create. And these are just class constants, um, and that's something I'm probably going to do a basics video on. But don't worry too much about it, these are effectively they work exactly the same way as regular constants. Um, so anyway, by passing that in, you can um, tell the zip system to actually create the file. So once we've created our zip file, the next thing we need to do is add our files to it. So to do that, we need a list of the files, and we're going to get that list by using the scan dir function, just to get a list of the files in that folder. So we're going to create a new variable here called files, and I'm going to set this equal to scan dir, and the name of the folder, which is uploads. So this will just return a list of all of the files inside that folder. So then what we can do now is just, uh, for the sake of testing, we can just print this uh, out. So print underscore r of files. And then if we reload our browser, you can see that we have this list of files. So these are the only ones we're interested in. Um, and these two at the start, which are just a single dot and the double dot, just mean current folder and up one folder. And we can just remove these by unsetting 0 and 1. So if we go back to our zip.php and just under the files definition, we can just use unset files 0 and files 1, like so. Reloading this now, oops, reloading this now, and we'll just show the four files that are actually in the folder. So that's good. So the next thing we need to do is loop over each of these files and add them to the zip file. So the way we do this is using a for each loop. So for each files as file. So inside of this loop here, um, the file variable here that we're creating will be equal to each one of the files in turn. So if I were just to do echo file, right, oops, and then a space, I guess, let it look weird, we will just get a list of the files. So you can see these file names here separated by spaces. So here's one is two, etc. Um, so that's how for each loop works. So what we need to do inside of here, instead of outputting the file name, is actually add it to the zip file. Again, this is fairly straightforward. All we need to do is use the zip object, and we're going to use the add file method. And all we do is pass in the um, path to the file we want to add. So this is uploads slash file name because the files are in the uploads folder. So we just pass in uploads slash file, like so. Okay. 
and then we need to once we've added all of the files we need to close the file and just you know make it closed so it can be downloaded the way we do that is just by calling zip close okay so this should be ready for an actual full test now so if we go back to our browser and hit reload once more see it takes a little while longer to load because of the zipping and my slow server anyway if we reload this now you can see this example.zip has been created if we open this up you can see that we have this uploads folder which is something we don't want and then inside of this we have these four files so the reason this uploads folder is created is because by default um, the zip archive or the zip file um, uses this full path as its path inside the file if that makes sense one thing you can do is actually specify the path inside the file where you want to put this file which is a little bit confusing but hopefully it made sense so for example if I were to just specify that I wanted my files in a files folder oops in a files folder like so uh, okay and then we do the whole thing again so I'll just reload it and then I'll go to our folder and refresh and reopen you can see that oh well actually the zip file was still created but yeah don't worry too much about that um, the reason okay so this is the fault the file that we've just added the reason that it's um we've still got the uploads folder is that we haven't actually removed the file before we created it so all we've done is open an existing zip file and then used add files on it so yeah that's probably quite a bad example but that's why that happened anyway so don't worry too much about this uploads um, in fact if I just delete the file I'll uh, show you that it wouldn't normally be like that so let's see let's go to our zip file again sorry no let's go to our browser again hit refresh and then refresh that again open that up and now you can see that we just have the files folder with the four files inside of it so because you can actually specify the path um, you can just specify no folder and just use the file name um, so if we just go back to our code and remove this files portion and the quotes because they're not necessary when you've got just a variable this will just put the files directly in the zip file so reloading this for the final time we'll create the example.zip again and there you go just straight inside the zip file we have the four files so that's pretty much it that's working now um, so the next thing that we should do is just have it download so the way we do that is just by redirecting the browser to the zip file which is slightly dodgy I guess in a way because some browsers might try and open it or display its contents or something but um, it seems to work pretty much all the time so anyway the way to do that is just once you've closed the file down here just use the header function to send a location header like so just redirect the browser to example.zip and then we just reload the browser again and we should now get the download prompt which we do click open and we have this zip file with the four files inside of it okay so that's pretty much it for this video a um, couple of things I did want to mention um, first one being that as you saw a minute ago actually kind of nice to come back to that um, the zip file still exists um, so there are ways you can create this file in memory and only download it sort of from there if you like um, <clears throat> I'm not going to cover those at the moment um, I'll probably do that maybe in future videos but I guess we'll see um, but just bear in mind that compressing files is quite a intensive thing for the server to do so it should be sort of kept to a minimum if you like and the bigger the file the longer it takes um, so you saw right you can actually tell on my server that if I just refresh this again you can see it's still doing it and then it takes a few seconds um, and that's only for a 2 meg file so something just to be aware of that it might be a little bit slow but again to the user this will just look like um, page loading I guess or um, you could put like a little javascript compressing dot 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 thingy I don't know anyway that's enough of me rambling so thank you for watching and I guess that's it